Praise the living Jesus. Our Lord is good. So my God is good. Amen. Let's pray. Eternal Most High, we thank you so much for our lives. We give you praise. We say, hallowed be your name. Thank you, O oh Lord, for seeing in you. Thank you. Thank you for everything you are going to do for us also in this place. We we'll bless your holy name. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Father, we we'll thank you for bringing us to this program this morning. We we'll honor your name. Be down in the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I pray all on the name of Jesus that your word this morning bless every hearer here in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. It to transform our lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Your word, O oh Lord, we grow us in wisdom and also in knowledge this morning in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Hallelujah. Can you do us a favor by coming to the two lines only? The two lines in, in the front so that we can, we can stay organized. Yes, we can be like uh, as one family in one. Uh -huh. The two lines in the front, uh, so that we can be seeing ourselves well. The two lines in the front only. Please, ma, please. Please, ma, please. I don't vest here. Uh -huh. So that we can be seeing ourselves. Uh -huh. Don't you see that we're better like this? Amen. Okay. 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 Amen. Uh -huh. The Lord bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We are in the season of amazing grace. And I want to tell you that the grace of God shall locate you and transform your life this season in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Before I begin my teaching, I want to greet my dad in the Lord and also my, my mommy in the Lord. They are great people in this place. The Lord bless you, sir. The Lord bless you, man. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I greet all of you that came this morning. Something new in, in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's open our Bible to Ephesians chapter 2, verse. One to five. Ephesians chapter two, verse one to five. And you were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walk according to the ways of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once behaved in time past, in the love of our flesh. We said, by the grace of God, through our faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. And that the 
finds grace as unmerited favor. Unmerited what? Favor. That's it. Yes. It is not by our works. It is not by our effort. It is not by what we know how to do that we have been saved. No. It is the grace of God. By the grace of God that me and you are saved. And are sons of God today. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Praise the living Jesus. We don't merit it. We don't merit it. Man deserves it. Man ha, has always failed God right from the beginning. But because of the love, because of the, the mercy of God and the love of God, according to verse 4 of this scripture, he said, you know, who, but God who is rich in mercy for his great love with which he loved us, with which he loved man, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. Made us alive. Made us alive. He is the one that made grace, you know, that made grace available to man. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The, the life of God that we have is not achieved by our effort, like I said before. It is by the grace of God through our faith, through our belief in Christ. Me and you, according to the word of God, you know, have no right. Me and you, according to the word of God, are not, you know, do not desire be saved at all, at all, considering the ways of man, for God did this just because of the plans that he has for man. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Praise God. Somebody say grace in action. Hallelujah. It is just by his grace. It is just by his grace that we were saved and are sons of God. Amen. Now, open your Bible to Acts chapter 11, verse 23. I want us to, I want us to see another dimension of grace. Are we there now? The Bible says, when he came and saw the grace of God, he was glad. When the apostles in Jerusalem, the pastor was sent to Antioch, to go and see them, to go and witness it. And when he got there, the Bible says, he saw grace. Amen? He saw what? He saw grace and was glad. And he encouraged them. Amen. Praise the living Jesus. And he encouraged them. Now, if Banana saw the grace of God, saw the grace of God, he saw it. We all know that grace is not physical. Amen? It's not physical. Yes. 
But the Bible is telling us here that Barnabas saw grace and was glad. So if he saw grace and was glad, it would be right to say that grace can be expressed outwardly. Amen. If if his two eyes could see, you know, and it can be very clear. Amen. Are you with me? In other words, there can be a manifestation of the reality of the grace of God. Are you getting it now? There can be a manifestation of the grace of God. If Barnabas saw grace with his eyes, saw grace and was glad, that means grace can be expressed outwardly. It can be manifested. Amen. Therefore, the definition of grace can be extended to include the divine influence upon the heart and the reflection of this influence in the life of a believer. Divine influence upon the heart of a believer that the that reflects in his life. Amen. Grace. For Barnabas saw it. He saw it. That's why I can, you know, I can bring out this, this definition, definition of grace, the definition of grace, as, an, as a divine influence, divine influence upon our heart, upon the heart of a believer. That reflects in his life. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the living Jesus. So, grace grace is is a divine influence that empowers a believer to prosper. A divine influence in the heart of a believer Grace is the divine influence upon the heart of a believer to empower him to do the work of God and serve God. Divine influence upon your spirit to empower you to excel in all things. A divine influence. Upon to be able to move forward in life, it defies influence. I use heart, I use spirit. 
Why? It's because the heart of heart of man is where the altar of God is. That is where the spirit of God dwells. Where the fire of God burns. That is the sanctifying fire that makes a child of God who he is. That's why I use heart and I use spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. When grace is at work in the life of someone, person. That I cannot be humanly explained. Amen? There is something about the person that people cannot really explain. You can't explain it. But you, you, you know, but you are seeing it. But you can't just you can't just easily define it. That is grace at work. Grace at work. I want to speak on briefly on better grace. Hallelujah. Greater grace. We have seen grace now as unmerited. Favor. And we have seen grace now as a divine influence upon the heart of a believer that reflects his life. Now, greater grace. Greater grace is a function of your yieldedness to the life of God in you. A function of your yieldedness to the life of God in us. yielding to the life of God in you, 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 you qualify it's all about you qualify 
for a greater grace. To qualify to function on him, let me say that differently. And that will determine the level of grace to function in different from each other. Did you get it? Amen. I'm talking of yielding. Yielding to function in a greater grace. In a greater review. And the life of God, the, you know, the more, the more you function, the more you qualify for a greater grace. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the living Jesus. Are you getting it? Amen. Now, the level of the level or degree of your yieldedness to the life of God in you reflects in your service to God and work for God. The level of of our yieldedness to the life of God in us reflects in our service. from the people's yieldedness the love of God in them. That's why, that's why when, you know, on the Sunday, for instance, some will come up for late. Amen? Hallelujah. Are you getting it? Now, in evangelism, some don't even think about it at all. of the apostles. As of the apostles. Chapter 4. Verse 33. You understand it now. Are we as of the apostles, chapter 4, verse 33. And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Amen. As they were testifying, as they gathered to testify, to work for Jesus, to work for Jesus, the Bible says, and great grace this time around, God is giving it. God is giving it as they gather testifying about the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, and great, this say, great grace. Say it again. Great grace of Jesus. So, greater grace is given by God. given by God. It's all about all about the level of our yieldedness to the life of God. It's all about the level of your yieldedness to the life of God in you. That will determine the level of the grace of God you function in. That is what happened here. He said, and God release great grace. Not grace this time around. Great
in Second Peter, chapter 3, verse 18. The Bible says something about the growing in grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Growing where? In grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. The knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, you know, speaks of the desire, the desire to study the word of God, you know, to and to know God through his word. To study, the desire to study, desire to know God through his word. In 1 Peter, chapter 2, verse 2, he says something there. Open it. Desire. The sincere milk of the word of God. That you may grow up to You may grow deeper. Are you there? Amen. Apostle Peter was admonishing the children of God should desire the sincere milk of the word of God. To enable them to grow up to salvation. Up to salvation. So the desire to, to, to know God through his word. Is a product of your yieldedness to the life of God that is in you. Did you get it? Amen. Growing grace and the knowledge. Of our Lord Jesus, growing grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus. Growing grace and the knowledge. That means me and you should. Desire it. We should desire to know God. We should desire to study the word of God. I'm going to grow in grace. Amen. Praise God. Praise the living Jesus. Is anybody in the house? I say, Praise God. I say praise God. So as you yield yourself to the life of God in you, the desire, the desire to study, the desire to know God more, the desire see God, desire to you know, to, to, to see a new side of God upon your heart. Hallelujah. Praise God. Are you in the house? Are you understanding what I'm saying? So, so your yieldedness 
that the life of God in you reflects in the desire to know God through his word. Like I've said later on, in the, you know, in the service of God. And also in the doing of his work. You are yieldedness to the life of God in you, in me, in us. You know, we reflect in our practicing of faith. Reflects even in our attitude and character. That's why the Bible would say, say that God gives grace to the humble and opposes the yes. the humble and the proud are both sons of God. Amen. They are both, they are both what? Sons of God. In the house of God. But because of the level of, of their yieldedness to the life of God that they have on the inside of them, this one is still proud. Is still manifesting pride. Why this other one is what? Is humble. Hallelujah. Amen. And the Bible says, and God gives. God does what? God gives. So if you want to express a greater grace, 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 or rather function in in a a greater grace, you have to. You have to yield the more. Yield yourself the more to the life of God in you. Yield yourself the more to the life of God in you. I struggle. It don't struggle to function in grace. It's not by works. Mm -mm. Amen. It's not by works. Like we said before, it's not by effort. Much, much effort. No, 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 no. Just yield yourself. Hallelujah. When I say yield yourself, I mean, so, you know, submit yourself. Surrender yourself. Commit yourself to that life that you have. Amen. Praise God. Praise the living. I told you that you know it also you know reflects in the practicing of of your faith. Yes, of course. Yes, of course. Yes, of course. 
grace is in levels. It's what? In levels. Grace is in levels. You must know that. That's why it has to do with your yielding. Yielding to the life that you receive. The life of God in you. To enable you function. In other words, the more you yield, the more, the more you function in a greater grace. So I advise you to yield yourself to the more to that life, to the life of God in you. I advise all of us, amen. Praise God. To yield ourselves, the more, the more, so that we can experience, can experience grace in a new dimension. Praise God. Are you understanding me? Now, the level of your faith. Now, let me say, the level of Mr. C's faith and that of D is different. Amen? It must never be the same. It must never be the same. Impossible. The level of my faith is different from the level of my neighbor's faith. That's what I did. And that, you know, and that is as a result of, you know, our yieldedness to the life of God that we receive. Differently in different levels. The way I respond, you know, to the things of God is different from the way my neighbor, the one sitting next to me, responds to the things of God. I go. And that also, you know, we, 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 we qualify us for more grace. And I you increase, and I increase in the function of grace, or it will stay you there. Stay there. Praise God. Praise the living Jesus. Now, think about it. God gives. Here, he says, as they were walking for God, God released a great grace. This other one in attitude and character. It says, God gives. Amen. God releases upon them the apostles. He releases more grace. Here, He gives more grace to who? To the proud. Another side. He released great grace to those who have made up their mind to serve. This time around, so to, 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 uh, to function.
function in the realm of a greater grace, it is God. is keeping it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Are you with me in the house? Did you get it? Yes. So brothers and sisters, I urge you 